as you probably figured out already, this is part two of the theory crafting series, or it wasn't a series, it was supposed to be a regular video, but it ended up being long as hell. So this is part two, part three coming soon, and it's very interesting you'll see just how some of these predictions ended up playing out now that we're actually in the season so next up we got moon mommy and i i'm honestly pretty glad that they didn't really give her anything too viable or useful battery collection horizon is gonna be okay i guess big bang horizon is one of the other ones where this is one of the few characters i feel like that'll actually be viable but it's honestly kind of just because battery collection is kind of ass battery collection works better now that you can only make one shield battery per replicator i feel like it's kind of a, a buff in that regard and it's kind of funny how things like that work on this game where them changing things about the overall game world or game logic itself can kind of buff or nerfs buff or nerf certain different types of things that they do with the legends themselves as far as tactical and ultimate cooldown horizon this is probably going to be another one where it just comes down to preference uh when i play horizon i don't really use the ultimate that often i mean that's probably a fault and i probably should be using it a lot more than i do but with these perks i probably will end up being battery collection tech cooldown horizon just kind of because that's more so my play style and it allows me to get up close and get in the fight and be aggressive but at the same time big bang ulti cooldown horizon is pretty much the opposite end of the spectrum so i feel like they've structured her perks in a way where they kind of benefit both of the main types of horizon players as far as octane reckless is once again another one where i don't i don't like i explained earlier i don't necessarily think it's too viable especially when you have thick skin and he's taking less stem damage i i mean that extra health with the speed boost is just is kind of a no-brainer because there's a lot more times that you're going to be using your stem on octane than you're going to be taking explosive damage and that's one of the things that you have to use with these to to take into account the i guess frequency of use if it's an ability that may seem useful but it's something that you're probably never going to be in a position to use like reckless for instance because a lot of times with explosives you can just move or it, this it's very unlikely that you're going to just tank an explosive so reckless is kind of useless in my opinion but uh if you have any differing opinions feel free to drop them in the comments airborne agility now i, I i'm honestly kind of this is actually kind of interesting um I, i'm probably gonna end up being wrong and, and sounding kind of dumb here because i've never played on pc and i don't know how any of that type of stuff works but from what it seems it kind of sounds like and i mean honestly with his jump pad this is the only way that i've seen to get anything close to that or close to what i see them do on pc on console but this may be a way or this may be the closest thing that we have on console to being able to tap strafe with the airborne agility thing you can actually kind of do this now with his jump pad uh, his jump pad kind of gives you a little bit more i mean i guess it'll it works better with like horizon with her extra air control or whatnot but it's kind of easier to turn to a side and start moving towards that direction and it's not a true tap strafe it's not like a 180 or a 90 degree turn or anything like that but airborne agility is definitely going to be pretty interesting but with that being said mad hop stick skin octane is probably going to be the one you see the most i airborne agility is interesting but mad hops is probably the most effective and the most efficient and it'll probably end up doing the most for you when it comes to actually getting further in your lobbies and winning games so thick skin is probably always gonna end up being the viable factor but airborne agility and mad hops may kind of just boil down to what type of player you are and what type of one you feel like would help your play style the most or your teammates the most depending on what type of player you are now pathfinder is actually pretty interesting and honestly this change in level two i feel like may open up pathfinder to seeing more viability and more gameplay when it comes to competitive apex pathfinder himself is a character that's not necessarily bad when it comes to team play and team utility in competitive apex and with the addition of him now being able to access survey beacons or ring consoles 
and you being able to choose on the fly, I think that may be a thing that may propel him back to being seen in high level ranked and comp gameplay. Because at the end of the day, it's one of the biggest audibles when it comes to any of these perks in terms of being able to change just the dynamicness of your team. It opens your team up to the ability of now being able to play in different ways because you may know where the ring is or you may know where everyone is on the map. And those two abilities are definitely things that shouldn't be overlooked and should definitely be used to their fullest potential when you're playing Apex. For down and away and zip lines in, I I don't play Pathfinder enough to see zip lines in really being that useful. I mean, it's not the easiest to hit somebody on zip lines either way, whether you have aim assist or not, before I get those comments. So I don't see zip lines in being too useful. I I could definitely see down and away being more useful because you'll probably end up using it more but then again the condition of you needing to get a knock means that you may only get this like three four five times a game depending on how good you are you may get it more or less you know there's some sweats out there there's some casuals but this is one of those ones where like i said earlier you may just want to base it off of how often or the frequency that you think that you'll be able to use the ability itself now for now for this guy i i wish they had a perk that just removed them from the game but you know we don't get that luxury tactical cooldown i don't i, I don't see it being too vi i don't see it being more viable over murder machine i'm not gonna lie especially with the type of player that revenant is and this is one of those types of things where them giving different legends the same perks may end up developing into some interesting team composition and team play viability is that how you would say that and ash with the uh, i know we just looked at it but i don't remember already and ash with the perk that wasn't murder machine paired with a revenant with the murder machine perk means that they're probably just going to go around the map finding every single team and being able to wipe them pretty easily and this is the type of thing that you're going to have to watch out for in this season's lobbies some of these perks makes it a lot easier for people to do what was known as the old rev team play style and basically just bombard everyone when it comes to just being able to swarm them and instantly close the fight and just move on and this is only furthermore going to be the case if it's a team of sweats that are running these abilities in tandem and making them be able to work with each other so tactical cooldown rev is is definitely going to be annoying especially because if you start winning the fight they can fucking nightcrawler wolverine jump 800 meters away in the middle of your clip and these are another set of level three upgrades that i hate devolving some of these into this but again it just depends on what type of player that you are whether you feel like shadow pounce takes too long to come back or whether you feel like shadow pounce takes too long to charge but as i've said a few times during this video grim leaper is reset on nox so if you don't feel too confident in your ability to actually get nox for the perks to trigger and be able to be used it may not be in your best interest to pick it up in the first place now with the Valk perks, I used Valk a little bit before they nerfed her and these perks seem like they're kind of trying to return her back to her former glory. Afterburners is pretty good, but I can see most Valk mains going with Aerial Expert because with the introduction of Evac Towers into the game, let's be honest her skyward dive is not as useful as it used to be so if you're a valk looking out for yourself and using aerial expert may end up working in your favor especially because if you can stay alive and win more fights and just contribute more to the fighting than you would to running away and getting 15 percent more height when you're running away you may end up being a lot more of a help to your team than you just being useful when it's time to get out of a fight i mean if you can win your fight then you're a lot more useful than needing you to get out of it in the first place am i right so with that being said i expect to see a lot more full tank aerial expert valks because because full coverage from the description looks like it'll be pretty cool and it may work well but this is one of those things where we'll have to see how it looks in game and honestly valk missiles are kind of the the least damaging or the least threatening thing in the game to me like if i get hit with a valk missile it kind of feels like a mosquito landed on my arm or something it's just like oh cool i'm stunned for like a second and a half and then i'm just gonna jump behind some cover and shoot at the valk when she runs through the open because she knew her missiles hit so yeah full tank aerial expert valk if you're 
focusing on yourself and you want to be more of a contributing factor overall to your team but full coverage may work if you actually are able to use her missiles effectively and hit people with them and then close in afterwards which i don't see happen too often and afterburners uh, it may work in competitive play if you're running valk and comp a lot of times comp valks are more utility based they're not necessarily i've, I've seen some i, I pretty sure comp valk is a lot of times a fragger or anchor i don't really see them ever be igo but at the end of the day afterburners is going to help you with rotation and movement and escape and when you're playing comp optimizing for efficiency and those types of things are things that are going to end up leading you closer towards the end and placement is really the only thing that matters there actually not let me not say that that's why season 17 and 18 and 19 were so stupid but i digress and Professor Portal, this annoying motherfucker that turns intangible and turns into Lemillion every time she's near death. Now, Sixth Sense is pretty interesting, but then again, we all know with Wraith, her passive is wonky anyway, and it only works sometimes. So that's one that we'll have to see if it's actually working in game to see whether it's viable to use it. But most Wraiths are probably going to end up going tack cooldown because, let's be real, the most important thing for a Wraith to do is be able to turn invisible and tangible. What word do you even use for what she does? When you clip her and she has two health left and she's trying to run away and get behind a door and sit there and hit a battery before you kick it down and shoot her in the face. And yeah, we all know how that goes. I, I don't need to explain it to y'all. Now, her level three upgrades are probably going to be things that are determined by how you're playing Wraith. If you're a solo Wraith, I I'm pretty sure you're going to use fast phase more often than not because ultimate cooldown I, I, for solo Wraiths, you're probably mainly using the ultimate for a speed boost. I don't really see any solo Wraith use the portal in an effective manner for their teams i mean i know there's like three of you that may do it but you know it's not common so let's not focus on the outliers here and this is another thing that will boil down to frequency of use you may think getting your ultimate cooldown down by 60 seconds will be a lot more useful than reducing your tactical wind up but if you're using your tactical five six seven ten times more than you're using your ultimate it's obviously the better choice for you to use because it's the one that you're actually going to be using more often than not one thing about these perks don't get caught choosing a perk that you think is going to be useful for a specific situation over the perk that you could be using with a lot more frequency and end up never getting into those situations where that one perk is useful and i think that's one of the things that they've thought of and kind of tried to balance and counterbalance with some of these perks there's a lot of them where they are situationally useful but those situations are few and far between as opposed to ones where they're probably going to be useful no matter what the situation is because they just improve the efficiency and speed of use and ease of use of different abilities so that's definitely something to keep in mind with these my blood uh bloodhound i the, the three times i've used him I will say the the white raven charging ultimate by 25 when activated i can see that being a lot more useful than his tactical cooldown being reduced but then again this and i know you're probably tired of hearing me say this by now but it, this is apex legends so it matters depends on whether you're playing fun casually with friends whether you're playing it ranked or whether you're playing comp for comp, tech cooldown will probably be a lot more effective than Raven's Blessing, especially because in comp, you're not really going to waste the tech charge on a white Raven. I don't really think I've ever seen anybody do it, and you're not really paying attention to or waiting for them in the first place. You're more so focusing on using awareness and looking at things going on around you to notice where the teams are, not necessarily one of the little in-game things and level three upgrade options are pretty much the same way odin's glare mixed with tactical cooldown is going to be a ridiculous combination when it comes to you trying to move around and take different angles and get behind the team without them seeing you uh, that's going to make it very difficult or even you just trying to run away period if you get scanned by a bloodhound that has odin's glare and tech cooldown up good luck buddy because they're probably going to run you down but a taste of blood raven's blessing bloodhound oh man this will probably be more so for fun casual users 
And then especially due to the fact that you only gain HP on Nox when the ultimate is active. Taste of Blood is only going to be marginally effective and Raven's Blessing is going to help you get to that ultimate a lot faster. But if you're not getting Nox, then you're kind of just wasting your perks because the whole entire time you're doing this, trying to get the Nox for these perks to go off, you're still using your tactical, which could have a double duration and you could be using more of but instead you're not because you're trying to taste blood and the only blood you're tasting is the blood on your lip when you're biting through it because you get swung in third party <sighs> can't you hear how excited i am for that to happen all season 20. now i'm actually a fan of crypto both in apex and outside and his perks have actually been pretty pretty well balanced honestly i i'm pretty glad that both of the level three upgrades are in level three and see, this is something that I definitely predicted was going to end up happening when they first announced these perks. Uh, a good amount of them are just tactical and ultimate reductions and, and size increases and all of that little kind of stuff. It's not the worst thing in the world because this is the first iteration of the perk system. So I assume it to have balances and upgrades and eventually I assume the red shield to either get perks or us to be able to choose between the red shield with perks or the gold shield with perks. So I'm not necessarily complaining about the fact that there are so many tech and ultimate cooldowns and tech and, and, and ultimate ability duration increases and, and radius increases, but I just hope that in the future they'll switch some of these up and add some things that are a little bit more original to the character. But I kind of went off topic. Tech cooldown, I would probably use that just because it's pretty annoying for when your tactical gets destroyed and then you're a character running around with an ability that you just can't use. Like, Crypto is, I believe, the only character where he has an ability where it can just be rendered unusable for a good amount of time and then you're just running around with the only thing you're able to do is use your gun because all of his abilities are tied to the drone so if the drone is destroyed you have no drone you can't use his ultimate and you can't use his passive so if your drone is destroyed and your crypto you're basically playing call of duty against apex players for that reason i can definitely see tactical cooldown being a lot more viable viable Vi i'm trying to say viable every time i say that word not valuable just so y'all know be a lot more viable than ultimate cooldown with network expansion and network traffic network traffic may be a lot less necessary if you have an ash or a revenant or if anyone else has murder machine perk or if anyone else has the murder machine perk i, I guess we'll see as we go throughout this list and the network expansion is is cool i guess but with a crypto emp it's pretty easy to get your drone somewhere in an area where you can get it inside of a building under an awning something to where it's not easily shot so i can't necessarily see the range increase being too useful because the range it doesn't really matter if you can get it up in the middle of the fight that being said Level three perks are probably gonna depend on who else you have on your team. Cause if you have someone with murder machine, you, I can't see network traffic even being necessary or useful. Look how they murder my boy. All right, so Seer, faster movement using passive is is pretty ass. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't, I don't think anybody's really gonna, it's, it's kind of useless. I'm just gonna leave it there. I don't really see anyone picking Racing Hearts. I feel like Racing Hearts is one of those ones where they knew everyone was gonna pick Longview because it's a boost that is passive and tech and it kind of returns him back to his glory days. So it's like, why would you choose any other perk? So they just threw something on them. Now they could have gave somebody else faster movement using their passive and gave him one of the arbitrary C enemy squads in the area or, or, or cool down drones or something like that but long view seer is that sounds kind of crazy long view seer is always going to be the one used in that regard now as far as artist reach and focus scan focus scan is okay but for a level three upgrade you would think 1.5 seconds it's it's not enough like for a level three upgrade you would think it might be like three seconds five seconds and yeah that might have been a lot but you gotta think you gotta get a lot of these xp points or whatever they're gonna call these points to even get to level three for you to upgrade your armor to get this perk and you did all of that mind you this is probably gonna be towards late game end game 
it's possible it may be early game, but you're just a fucking sweat if that's the case. And in the end game, late game area, you only have 1.5 seconds more on your tactical. Like that's not uh, that's that's not too viable compared to you being able to get your ultimate up in there from a little bit farther back and you being able to get some shots in from a better position because you didn't have to throw the whole game running in the open to get that little football in there. So Artist Reach Longview Seer is really the only one that I could see making any sense. But if you ran Focus Scan or Racing Hearts, I wouldn't blame you. I would just question you and your decisions. And Vantage. Now, gaining access to rain consoles is, is definitely a good boon. And Ultimate Accelerants granting plus two bullets is also another good thing. So if you're running a Vantage with a Watson, ultimate reload vantage with watson would be th that's that's kind of like a cheat code like and this is why i wanted to do this video because i wanted to talk about the theories behind these abilities and how you can use them with the characters and with the game but also with other characters in the game so watson and vantage that combination of characters next season this season whenever this video comes out whew, this is uh, that, that's going to be a lot as far as bat bounce and sharpshooter Bat Bounce may end up being the more viable option between these two, but we'll have to test this in game and see and see just how improved the double jump is. Because if it's not really anything useful or really anything too, you know, worth it, then you definitely want to refresh your tag to go on hits with that ultimate. Because I'm not, I'm uh, even with me not being the biggest fan of Vantage's tactical, I feel like one of these level three upgrades could definitely be a big boost towards making it more feasible or more viable for a high place gameplay high paced so ringmaster vantage could be interesting but if you have a controller character on your team it's not even worth it just go ultimate reload especially if you have a watson on your team go ultimate reload and ask for one of the two ulti cells that they're probably carrying and as far as level three upgrades well just test them in game and see which one works better because I can't tell looking at this description.